I played the demo of this game and a bunch of others by indie developers during Steam Next Fest in June 22. If you haven't taken part in the Steam Next Fest yet, I would definitely recommend you do. Keep an eye out next month for the February Next Fest 2023 so you can get a taste of gems like this before they release. On to the review. Dave the Diver comes from developers Mint Rocket and on launch will be their debut title. Although this game has the look and feel of a small indie, Mint Rocket is actually a standalone brand of Nexon, a pretty big game publisher from Korea, who's best known for their MapleStory titles. Don't let that worry you though, this game is awesome and has a lot of heart. This is Dave. He's just a regular guy with a regular job, sort of. He doesn't look like your ordinary protagonist of a video game, but he is. Sitting at an astounding 97% overwhelmingly positive on Steam, with around 7,000 reviews, people certainly are feeling this game. And with the lovable cast of characters and deep gameplay loops, I can see why. The premise of Dave the Diver is simple. Spend your mornings and afternoons spearfishing in a zone the game calls the Blue Hole, and your evenings running and growing the sushi restaurant, Bancho Sushi. Currently still in early access, Dave the Diver looks like a roguelike on the surface. However, this isn't the case. It has the expected gameplay loops of venturing deeper into an area and collecting items, coming back to the surface to upgrade your gear and then going again and diving deeper than your previous run. However, unlike roguelikes, the map doesn't change with each run and it's not procedurally generated. It's also a story-driven game that persists upon death. I note this because I've seen some inconsistencies online that say this game is a roguelike. The map does transform as you move through the game or dive at different times of the day, but unlike traditional roguelikes, you can learn the map over a few runs. During each dive, you're on the lookout for ingredients to have on your restaurant's menu while keeping an eye out for any quest items or objectives. Before we get to quest design, we have to talk about the art style and soundtrack in this game. The game is presented in these gorgeous 2.5D graphics. Contrasting the pixelated foreground against a 3D background provides the developers the space to show off larger sea creatures and at times make Dave feel very small. The soundtrack is stunning. Each track feels so full of life and perfectly captures the context of the moment. The theme music in the lobby, the track that kicks in as you begin your dive, all tying together in harmony with what you see on the screen. During key moments or when upgrading items, there are these pixel cinematics that add a lot of visual style to the game. I mean, hold on a second, just, just watch this. Yes. For story, there is a main quest line that runs through the vein of this game, and other quests that are generally given to you through side character introductions who come into the restaurant looking for a specific dish or come chat to you on the boat. I have to admit, some of the quests in Dave the Diver did feel a little frustrating with the item placement. I'm looking at you, Stone Tablet. Like other aspects of this game, the weapon systems are pretty deep. There is a decent variety of melee weapons, ranged guns and explosives. Alongside this is an upgrade tree that you can follow to increase the stats of your arsenal. There's also an extra item slot that you can use for utility items such as extra oxygen, underwater scooters or explosive mines. With combat, you must keep in mind the different weapons to use, as these will affect the rank of the meat when fishing. Do you take the larger gun down, in case you come across dangerous or hardy sea creatures that require extra firepower? Or do you take the non-lethal approach, so you have better quality meat for the sushi? The better the quality, the higher your profits that evening. When night falls, the second part of this game comes to life, a restaurant management sim. But don't be fooled, this isn't tacked on. I was truly surprised at the depth during the restaurant part of this game. There was a lot more on offer here than I'd initially thought. With fast paced gameplay and different mechanics that keep it fresh, you take care of curating the menu at Bancho Sushi. During dinner service, you wait tables, pour drinks and grind wasabi in a style that feels very much like a 2D version of Overcooked. With options to run recruiting ads and select and hire staff, all of which by the way have different stats determining how they perform in the restaurant. They have a different set of skills that unlock as you pay to train them up, or you can use that same gold to purchase cosmetic upgrades for the shop. As you master dinner service, you learn new recipes and upgrade the food that you serve. The developers over at Mint Rocket have done an excellent job of providing a cozy and sometimes chaotic aesthetic to your restaurant. It has a dynamic menu hanging above the bar which lets you see your stock levels in real time during service. Throughout the game, you will bring your restaurant to social media fame through the game's very own social app called Cookstar. 
which rewards you as you climb higher into the ranks. Top tiers such as Platinum and Diamond are currently locked during early access and will release on launch. During dinner service, side characters come in and give you tasks to complete, usually a specific dish they want served. Speaking of characters, the cast in this game are so likeable. They're larger than life and all have unique personalities behind them. New characters are introduced often to drive the story forward and provide objectives for you to focus on. Characters range from climate activists, researchers, food critics and more, all pushing you to uncover the secrets of the blue hole while gaining fame for Bancho Sushi. You can tell the writers here put a lot of effort into trying to make the dialogue light and humorous. It did feel a bit dramatic and a little much at times, but the levity fits the style they're going for. So as far as the dialogue's concerned, mileage may vary. Above the water, you navigate the world of Dave the Diver using a boat and your smartphone. The boat connects you to both Blue Hole and Bancho Sushi, and the phone connects you to your shops for gear upgrades, weapon crafting, and your social app Cookster, as well as a ton of other apps that provide context for the game world. The settings menu in this game was lightweight and there wasn't a lot of options to be changed. There's actually no ability to change the keybinds which would have been nice to have. I played this game using a keyboard and mouse and I found that the menu navigation did feel clunky at times. It almost felt like the menus had been built with a controller in mind. The scrolling with the mouse wheel wasn't an option, but that might be hotfix in a future patch. With that aside, this game was a really unique experience and a bit of a niche genre. I have a feeling Dave the Diver will end up having a really special place in the hearts of the people who play it, and I'm glad I came across it. Dave the Diver is currently available on Steam for $29 and will leave early access for full release in the first half of 2023. If you enjoyed this review, please like and subscribe as it helps the channel a lot, and feel free to check the full write-up over at oncooldown.co.nz.